What's up and welcome back everybody, Josh Smith here for your Lightroom tutorial. Essentially we should be using Lightroom for all of our pictures just because it makes them better. Why not use some tools that to make things better? I don't know, we should, we should. So we're going to do that. I'm going to jump into Lightroom, share with you a couple quick tips on things that I do with most every picture that I take. Just run it through this process, try to get some basic enhancements, basic improvements to make those really good shots really great. Let's jump right in. Alright, here we are jumping right into Lightroom. A couple things we need to do before we go into Lightroom Classic is to go ahead and get our files organized to be put in and uploaded into the folders section. So go ahead and I'm going to exit Lightroom and make sure I go to find my folders and my files here. So first thing I'm going to take my theme here which is photographer and I'm going to go ahead and take that from my drive where that folder was or in this case on your camera however you're going to get it off of your camera onto your computer and put those images into a folder. So I'm just going to take this folder, it's got all my images there, I'm going to go ahead and transfer those over to my desktop. So once that's complete I'm going to go ahead and go back over to Lightroom. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to my folders section and hit this plus sign right here. That plus sign is going to allow me to add a folder. I can then add that folder by clicking the add folder button. Just find the folder where it was on my desktop, it was called photographer, and then hit choose. That should take me to the upload image pane. If this upload image pane doesn't look like this, sometimes the first time you open up Lightroom, it looks like this. There's a tiny little arrow in the corner of the left hand side that you need to click to be able to get the full screen view. I highly recommend relying on the full screen view to do this. Go ahead and click that once, get it full screen. Got all my pictures there ready to go. I'm, they're already all selected. I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. If for some reason these are files that you've imported before and they have not been checked and they're grayed out and they're not letting you add those in, there is a button over here under file handling that says don't import suspected duplicates. You can turn that off and that will probably fix the problem for you. Go ahead and click import now. is two different areas we're going to play around with, the library and the develop. So the library lets you organize your pictures. And if you guys remember, if you wanted to, you could say, hey, this is my favorite one. I'm going to star it. If I hit the little star button there, if this one is like a, maybe a really good one here, I'll hit star. Uh, this one's a four. Maybe this one's really good. They'll do four on that one. But this one's awesome. We'll do five. This one's fantastic. We'll do five. You can organize these things by their rating, which is down here in the middle section under sort. So down here we'll go to the sort section and we'll choose rating. There we go. So now they're all organized by rating, which is cool. You can also change the color. There's a little box right here underneath the pictures that you can click on that chooses the color. If you want to choose different color systems to be able to rate them, whatever you guys want to rate them with. The library section is primarily used for finding your images under the folder section and then organizing them with your rating system. The next thing we're going to do is going to go over to the develop tab. Now the develop tab is going to allow us to actually use and edit these photos, make them better. So we're going to do that here with a few different areas. The primary areas we're going to work down here is the basic, the tone curve, and the HSL. Split toning is also a really wonderful space to work in, in that it gives you this really wonderful opportunity to sort of like change the shadows and highlights color, which is really cool. But our basic areas that we're going to work with things is going to happen here in the histogram, the basic, the tone curve, and the HSL. I'll go over those in more detail here in just a second. Now before we jump over to the right hand side of the screen under the develop tab in Lightroom Classic, I'm going to look over here on the presets. Sometimes you can create or find your own presets that can do some really cool stuff that you can just sort of like overlay those, um, those overlays on top of a photo to really change what it looks like. This can be a really nice place to start. If you're interested in checking those out. The next thing I would suggest doing is coming over down here to basic. And essentially all of these changes that we're gonna make here 
just to improve our photograph, just to enhance it just a little bit subtly, is to be able to pull these pendulums back and forth and see what the changes are in your picture. One quick little pro tip before we do that is to make this window a little bit bigger, which allows me to then have a little bit more control over when I'm sliding these. So I'm gonna slide this one over, maybe we'll enhance some blues a little bit or pop those oranges. It's really just gonna go off of the feeling that I'm getting from the picture, sliding this pendulum back and forth and saying, you know, do I like it here? 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 Just go back and forth. Do the same thing with all of these sliders and work your way down. I've jumped ahead a little bit on this and I've gone through my basic settings and just adjusted a few of these. A couple really quick things that we can do. Let's say, you know what, I'm not really sure I like these bright whites here in the middle. Let's turn those down. I can double click on the word whites to turn it down and that will just reset it back to zero and then I can go back from zero and sort of give it another go. Another really nice thing to do is if I hit the backslash key that's above the return key, I can see before and after. And I can already tell I've really kind of cut through some of that kind of gray haze that's just hanging out on that picture there. And I've really popped some of those colors, which I'm really liking. So before and after is a really useful thing. The other thing you can do with before and after is this section here, you can see before and after right next to each other and really see your improvements in live action. You can still make changes to the one that's after, and then you can compare those to before. If you don't want to see this view, you just click this little button right here, this sort of square and a square button to go right back to where you were. A couple things before we move down to the next section that we want to take a look at. If you can tell, there is a section here called tone. Now, this tone has exposure and contrast in it, and as you can tell when I make changes to this, it also makes changes to the histogram up here. Now then that's really important to know for the next section because if I close this basic here with this little triangle, go down to tone curve and open that one up, you can see that I'm also making changes, essentially changes to the exposure in different sections that's also making changes to the histogram up here. Now I'm going to make those changes along this baseline. The baseline of the tone curve goes from the bottom left hand corner to the darkest deepest shadows to the top right hand corner to the brightest highlights. You can adjust those in curves. Now the curves gives you a wonderful transition between those, so nothing really looks too over or underexposed. Uh, we wanna really get a nice transition between those sections, and this is a wonderful thing to do. As I'm dragging this up and down in these different sections, as you can tell, they're highlighted as I scroll over them. Shadows, darks, lights, and highlights. I can push and pull that line above or below the baseline and just see those changes subtly change on the, the photograph itself, which is really, really nice in that it adds to those changes that have already happened in this tone section in basic. These are additional changes that are stacking. I'm not going back to the basic and changing those when I'm changing the tone curve section. Another really wonderful feature of this is that if you scroll down in your tone curve section, I can see that those changes are happening along this grid. Now these two change sections are tied together. So when I push and pull this line, you can see that in that dark section, it is also pushing and pulling that dark slider down here. Really wonderful piece of uh, technology that allows us to add those tone curve sections together along with our basic changes that we made in the exposure section of our highlight shadows, whites, blacks, exposure and contrast under tone. One additional little feature that I really love on the tone curve section is this little pin right here. I can click on this to turn it on and then hover over different sections of the photograph to interact with those sections directly. So if I want to tone down that sun, I can do that right here by clicking and dragging right on it or enhance it even more. If I want to pull out that sky, make it a little bit brighter, not quite as shallow in the grays. So many wonderful features that I can just interact with directly on the photograph changing those shadows and highlights by clicking and dragging up or down after clicking this little pin. One more really wonderful feature on this tone curve is you can see the before and after with each section. 
after the basic section, which doesn't have this little light switch button next to it, if I go next to tone curve, all the way over to the left-hand side of this panel and turn this on and off, I can see what those changes were before and after I added those changes just in the tone curve section. This is in addition to hitting my before and after button, which is what it's gonna show me before I did any edits, including the basic section, which is really, really powerful tool. I can see that all of this wonderful magic that I'm getting out of this photograph just by subtly enhancing those colors, lights, and shadows. One last section we wanna go over today for this very basic Lightroom tutorial is the HSL color section. This is hue, saturation, and luminance. You can click on each one of these sections to get those to pop up and allows me to fine tune these colors. Now these colors are sliding in this case in the hue section around the color wheel. You can tell that if I go all the way from one direction with red and all the way to the other section, it's gonna slide between a kind of a purple red and an orange red. I can slide that color around the color wheel. This just allows me to push this color in a slight direction to enhance it. Generally speaking, the more deep the colors are, the more they're gonna lie in the tertiaries of the color wheel. The primary colors are very bright, bright attention grabbing, but to really enhance reality, to bring out that photography, uh, we really wanna capture some of those kind of teals, some of those maroons, some of those uh, violets, those kind of colors that lie in between colors are really just gonna make beautiful photography. All right, sliding on over to the saturation section, you can see that you have the ability to desaturate or oversaturate any of your colors. Again, these are sliders that should be typically used just in a pendulum fashion. I'm gonna be watching my photograph very closely while I swing this left and right just to get a sense of what's gonna be a better picture. And lastly, the luminance section is gonna allow you to choose how bright or how dark any of these colors are. This is different from saturation. Saturation goes from no color to full color. Uh, luminance goes from light to dark. It's sort of like adding black paint or white paint into any of your pigments if we were working with pigment rather than light. It will have a similar effect on your photograph, so really just, again, slide those sliders back and forth. See if you can bump up those colors to get a little bit more beauty out of your picture. Again, taking a really good picture and making it great. So there we are, guys, taking this picture from before and after. Let's just take a look from where we were and where we got to. I think we really enhanced a lot of these blue skies, enhanced that orange contrast in the center there, got rid of some of this kind of obscuring gray around the edges to add just a really nice photo. Now this is the most basic stuff that you can do in Lightroom. There's so much more that you can do. We will try to add those tutorials in to just enhance your photography in general. I'm hoping you're using Lightroom at least in those steps just to open it up, do your file management outside of Lightroom, making sure you're in the libraries tab, Add your folder in the folders section with the plus sign, picking your pictures that you wanna work with, going over to the develop tab. You can of course change your pictures down here in the photo reel, working your way down the basic, the tone curve, and the HSL sections to improve your photographs. Once you're finished with everything, you just need to go over to the library tab again and choose export. If you're going to export your work once you're finished doing your edits, just go over to the library tab, select the pictures that you want to export. You can do them one at a time or select multiples by holding shift. This is the only one that I've edited so far, so I'm going to go ahead and export this one. Click the export button again in the libraries tab, going to choose where I want to export it to. Under export location, you can choose specific folder. You can export it directly to the desktop if you like. Under specific folder, I can choose where I want to uh, export that to. In this case, we'll just choose my photographer folder here where my other pictures are. I can then go down to my file naming section. If I want to do a custom name, I'll just type that in. This is photographer theme. Underneath your image 
settings, you can choose the format of this. If it's going to be put online, a JPEG is fine. If you want to print it, you can do TIFF. TIFF is a really good image format for printing. If you're going to go over, take this to Photoshop to do some more edits from there, you can make it a Photoshop file, which is really great. I'm just going to say this is a JPEG. If my quality is set to 100, that will make it a bigger file size, but generally speaking, 100 quality is what you want if you're going to put something online. The resolution, however, does need to be turned down. 300 is the magic number for resolution under image sizing to be able to print things. 72 is all you need to be able to put things on the line. And that should be all that we need here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my watermarking is turned off because I don't like those. And I'm going to go ahead and hit export. That will let me know over here that it's exporting that file shouldn't take too long and then I can go find it here in my folders and there it is guys our finished photograph going from a very good picture to an even greater picture with just a little bit of work in Lightroom importing those photos in the folder section taking them to the develop tab and then back to library again to export once they're done all right thanks guys I hope that's very helpful for you this is not the first time that we've used Lightroom in the classroom this is just a refresher uh, we should have already gone over most of these things in class, which I'm sure we did. But just as a refresher for you guys, I thought I'd record this quick video to help you enhance your photos for our photographic challenges for the rest of our online class. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Take it easy. Try to stay indoors as much as you can. Uh, social distancing is a thing now. We're doing that. And uh, in the meantime, I hope everyone stays safe and healthy. Thanks so much.